Getting down to the wire, and we have a very special guest on the couch with us right now. Thank you. Paris Faulkner is here. Oh hey, Paris. Welcome. Hi. Oh, my goodness. First of all, you guys are my sunrise every day. Oh, oh that's, so, that's so, so good. You're, you're our midday sunshine. Right. <laughs> or rain, that? whatever it's doing. And you see right? Carly in the pitch black at 4 o'clock, right? That's exactly and then right. right. We this cover all <laughs> types of skies. Yes. Here well, on it's couch. always sunny with you guys. Thank oh, you. So I'm glad to be you. here. And I'm bringing good news this morning. I know we're not going to talk about the good news news first, but it's coming up. Yeah. It okay. is coming up. But first, let's talk a little bit about what you've been up to. You went down to the southern border. You've been down oh. to the southern border. And now, you know, we're on track. We've done two million so far in this fiscal year. Yeah, that's a new number. And now, you know, while this channel has been talking about the southern border, it wasn't until Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott started uh, ex essentially exporting some of these migrants to places like Martha's Vineyard and D.C. that the whole country yeah. now is talking about it. Well, you had to make, you know, Richy rich folk feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and then you get all sorts of attention. Um, and, and that's not to say that they don't have the right to be rich, but they can't, they can't be blind, deaf, dumb to what's going on. And it's a sanctuary. So basically, they're lying to everybody from these sanctuary cities. They're saying, come, you're welcome. Kamala Harris, the vice president, told us, didn't she? She told us. She said, do not come to them. Now, the White House made her clean it up. But those were her words. And she went on. I had right. that clip. I'm going to run it again today. Border is closed. The border is closed, blah, blah. So some of that video you just showed, I think we brought back with us from that wall. So mm -hmm. I, I stood in front of the wall. The wall, by the way, I'm not really in there great shape. But I could exercise a little bit and reach the end of it. And I'm not talking gap. It's done. Like, they, they just aren't going to fill more wall there. It. So you're coming across the river. The cartels have helped you to know where you can go. They even know where the sensors are. Like, I did a whole stand-up where there was a sensor. And you were in Arizona? Yeah. Uh, no. I was in Arizona two weeks ago, okay. though, because I always go down there when I'm home. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I was there for home. But no, I was at the number one entry point for illegal crossings in this country along our 1933 Is that where border. Bill Malusian is? Yes. We were in Eagle Pass Got in it. the Del Rio sector. And when you stand there and you see people coming up, I brought something for you this morning, a little bit of video that shows how big the Mexican flag is, right? We don't even have a flag on our side. We don't need one, okay? <laughs> they know. The river, and if they put up that video, the river sits so close. You know how narrow the Hudson River gets between Jersey and New York, and at the end of the day, we all go back to Jersey? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it takes us like that long. That's how narrow this river is. The difference is, it's a sovereign nation on the other side. Now, yeah. some would argue so is Jersey, right. but it's not. <laughs> so there you are. And as you look across, right, as you look across, you realize that the only thing there are a few National Guardsmen at some points, uh, Border Patrol. They're all doing processing. Yeah. They're in offices and places. They want to be down They're at the border. They're doing the paperwork. There's 13,000 the total. And look at how many IRS agents we have. But we can't get enough on our own border. Yeah, please preach. You know what? It changed my perception and my perspective on this story. And when the two million number hit today, that, that is one number that I do want to tell you about. But you know what the bigger number is? Since Biden got into office, there have been 3.4 million encounters and crossings across that border. And that does not include a new number that I got, Closer to a million gotaways north of that 800,000. And who do those, who, who are, who's in that number? We don't know. We I don't, don't know, but we chased them one the night. We never got we, them. We tried to, to get up with, with some of them. Camo, we know about that at the border. And you mentioned Arizona. Yeah, we were seeing that with the fentanyl. Do you know everybody's coming across pretty much in Camo now? Why you you said? Because they're, they're, they don't even need you the camo. So you're them. talking about the gotaways are in camo <clears throat> because the other people want to immediately surrender. Some of them do. Some of them do. And some of them don't. Mm. Because if they did, they wouldn't look for places along the border where they don't have to encounter our people. And there are so many of those. If you're people. law enforcement at the border and you're a sheriff, you have uh, 2.1 million people to focus on. Instead, Sheriff Javier Bo Salazar over in Bear County decides that he's got a problem and it's with Governor DeSantis mm. who picked up, he says, illegals under false pretenses and brought this horrible place called Martha's Vineyard in the <laughs> summer. Watch. And I believe that they were preyed upon. Somebody came from out of state, preyed upon these people, um, lured them with promises of, of a better life, which is what they were absolutely looking for, to just be uh, exploited 
and uh, hoodwinked into making this trip to Florida and then onward to Martha's Vineyard for what I believe to be nothing more than political posturing uh, to make a point. Yet 50 uh, die in Texas in a trailer because they were being neglected. Was there a freak out about that? No, there wasn't. You've had criminal aliens get across that southern border and victimize Americans, killing some, raping some. Was there any type of outrage about that? No. It's only when 50 get put into Martha's Vineyard, which wasn't saying they didn't want this. They said they wanted this. They said they were a sanctuary jurisdiction. But that was all virtue signaling. And not only did they not welcome them, they deported them the next day with the National Guard. Give me a break. And so just... now that that sheriff is launching a criminal investigation into Governor DeSantis. Of course he is, because that's easier to do than to solve the problem. Remember who's in the majority by Camerolli right now and in the White House. This is just like anything else that Democrats decide they don't want to deal with. Even when they're in the majority, they can't find the answers. You don't think that they know what's coming across. And that two million number, again, it's important, but fold it in with the 3.4. If that's the first half of his presidency, what will the second half look yeah. like? Because that's not going to change. And now they've stockpiled all of the pieces of the wall that they could be still building with, and it's just rotting. We and paid for paid, it. Right? Yeah, we already oh, paid for it. Of course, we paid for also, it. Also, Harris, I, I, this border crisis is getting more attention than ever before now because of this move by Republican governors to send the illegal immigrants to other cities, sanctuary cities. Karine Jean Pierre is finally getting questions about it. But where was the outrage when so many other things happened? I remember being on the outnumbered couch with you when the Texas uh, National Guardsman uh, Bishop Evans died. Yeah. He drowned trying to save other migrants. And he's he's a member of the National Guard. Yeah. Crickets. Nothing. Yeah, there, where there was, was the a... attention when the 50 migrants died in, in the truck? Yeah, well, we will never forget. Well? And that's why you have to go to and the border. And that's in Bear, Bear County, by the way. There's a small memorial to Bishop Evans right at the river's edge. It's the first thing that greets people as they're either trying to climb out of that river soaked and want to turn themselves in, the give-ups, as they call them, Steve, or they're just hoping that while everybody's focused in on those 50 or 100, I'm going to go this way. We were at one area where 354 people came up like that. And they were naked. The National Guard had to pull up trucks to, to cover them while they took off all their clothes and just left it everywhere. It looks like a third world country on that river right now. It looks like what they left. And, and of course, our hearts break. We want to help these people, but they have to do it the right way. They don't have the right to cut the line. But you yeah. know what? Where's the line? Right. That's it. Exactly. Because this so administration, there is no too. line. It's invisible. Come on in, and we're going to take care of you. Yep. Listen, speaking of taking care of you, uh, for a lot of people, they rely on their faith. And you look yep. at the news, and there's so much bad news, and a lot of people are scared because of the crime, and a lot of people have all sorts of stuff coming up in their personal lives. You, you've got a new book that comes out I halfway do. through November. It's called Faith Still Moves Mountains. And it talks about not only some real stories of people of faith, but also it talks about your faith. And it talks in particular about your father. Yeah, I talk a lot about the foundational nature of having a cool head in moments when you really don't feel that way. And I prayed a lot at the border. I, I pray every day. I, I pray with all that we have going on in our cities. Um, but mainly I listen. It's less of a conversation that I'm having with God to God. And that's what this book is about. Part of the reason why statistically we're finding that fewer people believe in the Lord. Gallup has been taking a look at this since the 1950s. Yep. Um, but now fewer people, even if they believe that there's something greater than, than we, they don't believe that he does anything with us anymore. They don't believe that he intervenes in our lives. And the importance of listening when you pray. You know, stop scrolling on your social and get down on your knees and let him scroll something past you. Otherwise, you're, you might miss it. Yeah, and, and I, I write in the book about having a divine assignment. Those things that, that feel just like we showed up on time, his timing to do. And what you're, you're carrying a baby right now. Right. And the minute you find that out, you realize somebody greater than me trusts yeah. me with the most precious thing on the planet. Yeah. I remember Life. my mom said when she was pregnant with uh, me and my sister, she said she felt chosen. Yes. And I never really understood That's that it. until I got pregnant. And I was like, oh, yeah. God chose me for this baby. I love the title of your book, too. Faith Still Moves Mountains, Miraculous Stories of the Healing Power of Prayer. Thank How you. True is I'm, that? I'm hoping that people will reignite that spirit 
of feeling chosen, of feeling that they have a purpose, and also of understanding that even when things go wrong, and they can go terribly wrong, even when they do, when we lean in to God, He leans in Absolutely. to us, and we just have to be open. There is a section of the book that's one of my favorites, and it's a glossy section. There are no pictures or anything, but it's, I worked with a theologian to come up with like a a topic. <clears throat> so maybe you're asking to pray for someone else. We call that being an intercessor for someone else. But we don't always, we say, oh girl, I'll pray for you. And then you go home and you're like, well, where do I start? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we put very short prayers that people can infuse in their lives Love to that. get practiced get at Get them it. the right words. Yeah. You, can you, can Fox, it every day. you can go to foxbooks.com. Foxnewsbooks.com. Fox you can go to Amazon, any place books are sold. Uh, and you can do that now. I mean, they're on pre-sale. The book comes out November So 15th. you have two daughters of your own. You just I wrote do. a book. You were just at the border. You also have they two shows. Me. What's coming up on both of your shows? Faulkner okay, Focus, uh, let's, let's do the Faulkner Focus because we're going to stick with that border topic. And we're bringing in Senator Kennedy. Uh, you know he's never at a lack for words. No. Louisiana Senator. And we're going to talk about that fentanyl because Nogales was another area that, that we got a bunch of news about yeah. yesterday. Nogales, Arizona. Um, and that's my home. That's eight miles from where I got married. So I'm really familiar with that. But Senator Kennedy will talk to you about the movement of fentanyl across this country. It'll give you chills. We love so his plain spoken style. I know, right? right? You never know what he's going to say. <laughs> it's going to be quotable, though. Thank you, you Harris. Oh, thanks Congratulations for having on me. the book. It's so exciting. It's going to do so well. Oh, thank you. Inspiring. Right. So God bless people. you guys. I know it. Faith still moves mountains. Thanks, Harris. Harris. Yeah.